So somebody sent me some GPS coordinates locally. I actually spoke to the guy and this location here is apparently where there's been two sightings of an unidentified creature or creatures, as in the two sightings, the creature was of a slightly different size. Each time it was seen, the first time it was large, the second time it was kind of not as large. So I decided to come here and spend the night here in camp to see whether I could see anything. Now, I've actually been around this lake before. It's a really big lake. And if you look on the drone footage, it goes off for miles and miles. But this is just a small nature reserve here, kind of a long forgotten nature reserve. They did some work here, but they've kind of abandoned it. The cabin back there is falling apart. The bridge in front of me has just kind of been left as well. So maybe they just run out of money on the budget. Basically, I don't think I'll see anything, but I'm going to get camp set up spend the night here. Before I actually set up, I'm just going to check out this cabin. I know this has been abandoned for ages. It looks like people have probably been sleeping in here at one point. Small bits and bobs down there. I'm not sure what that is. Part of the vehicle. Let's make sure Bigfoot's not waiting for me in one of these, uh, these buildings here. There's a lot of mosquitoes in here. Mm. Oh, it looks okay. I just uh, orientated the vehicle a bit. I think this is the way it's going to be. I don't really mind the rain. Um, that is supposed to stop in an hour or two, but it just means that if I need to get out of here, I can just get straight in and, and drive away rather than have to reverse it or anything. What would be really good is if ARB knew how to make Velcro. I mean, it's been around a while. You'd think they would have mastered that. I've been in a number of places in the past. You might have seen on previous videos where I um, get sort of like a bad gut feeling and I, and I leave. This isn't completely one of those places. Um, even that dingy old cabin over there doesn't really sort of freak me out. Um, but... Uh, when you know people have seen things here and like you've spoke to those people as, as I have and uh, or one of them at least anyway and they're convinced of it and you sort of look in their eyes and you're kind of measuring them really and you think well actually this dude for real believes what he saw and you start looking in the tree line you, you do <laughs> it does start to sort of play on you a bit um, I'm pretty sure I just spotted Bigfoot do you have a semi? I'll just make sure I keep my chastity belt on because that sucker isn't going to get that off. I don't care how strong he is. You know, I made that out of uh, quarter inch thick steel. It's, it's a good one. It's a good one.
very windy day. This does not want to let up. Actually pulling in some solar energy though which is cool uh, it's just keeping the battery topped up and the fridge going i'm back to a bit of a smaller battery now until i convert over to a bit more of a permanent setup i have to move dragonoid out the way my son gave me that he said it would keep me safe hopefully he's right but uh made some battery compartments there steel boxes and the foam isn't actually all the way at the bottom it's, it's just kind of to take the noise out of it really and um just two compartments in the seat. I still need to get another battery on the side, but um, as of yet, I, I just you know I just can't I can't really obtain one. Um, but I'm going back to AMG batteries, gel AMG deep cycle batteries, just for the winter. I'm just having too many problems with lithium and um, the temperatures. You know, minus 25 degrees C and below. It's just, it's just just becoming a little bit problematic. So these things discharge to extremely low temps and charge at extremely low temps as well so they actually are going to strap in as well they're not just going to be loose in the in the box but they saved a lot of space in the vehicle and uh, there's still about three inches of foam between the battery and the seat so it's a firmer seat but it's pretty comfortable just done a couple of sandwiches I needed that I was getting pretty hungry it's up pretty early this morning, I haven't had anything really since now, but uh, I really want to get out on the boat, but the wind combined with the rain, it's cutting, you know, I'm really like, it's mid, oh it's a cuckoo, that's cool. Yeah, the wind combined with the rain, it's just, it's just really putting me off to be honest. I'm, I'm actually tempted to get in the rooftop tent and just kind of dry off and, and just take five from this uh, from the weather. As much as I don't want to pack up the cooking stuff, because obviously I'm going to have dinner later, the rain's not leaving me much choice. I actually decided to take a break up in the roof tent and I fired up the diesel heater just to dry off my boots and my jacket and my jumper and kind of warm up a bit. I ended up falling asleep. The diesel heater is obviously built into the engine bay so um, you know I never have to worry about taking it with me. Just switch it on at the back or with the key fob or whatever so it's kind of useful really but the rain's died down uh, but the winds have picked up and I actually got woken up by the awning getting ripped out the ground and getting folded up over the roof tent which is I've just fixed so it bent all the bar work and just almost completely wrecked the ARB awning second time that's happened really but uh, you know it's no fault of the awning it's just really my fault for putting it out in the wind I'm gonna get out now anyway now that the rain stopped and um, yeah see see what it's like maybe go for a trek we'll do some fishing but definitely too windy for the blow up boat unfortunately but not too windy for the blow up doll <laughs>
as much as that's a beautiful spot it's uh, a little bit too windy so i'm going to use this building as shelter i might actually get some sleep tonight so i'm just doing a little walk around the area um and this is some of the stuff that this guy is saying is everywhere around here in sort of unexplained fashion now i'm not saying that you know i'm a believer and all that kind of stuff i'm a very open-minded guy but uh, i just spotted that and remembered what he said to me so uh yeah apparently there's a lot of structures and he's even got a print um which you know i've seen a photo of it looks pretty good i don't really want to reveal who this guy is or even show too much of what this is because you know i don't want to bring attention to somebody who doesn't want it but um you know there's a lot of wilderness around here who knows hey so i'll just keep on trekking through certainly i know there's one thing around here and that's bears quite a lot of remains around here obviously fish looks like pike I haven't been back here in a while this is when me and uh, Doggo slept about six years ago now maybe five years ago we had the tarp strung up nice wind barrier and we were both tucked in here it's pretty good actually i thought i'd try my hand at some fishing see what was around i thought perch so uh just some little perch really but despite how small these ears these are it depends how many of them you catch and uh, yeah, that is a small one. Well, I've got some perch. I think I'm gonna clean some of these up and um, have them for dinner. some rice on the go. It's going to take a while on this thing. It's time to prepare some fish and this is where you see a master at work my master i mean a novice
they're not bad to be honest he tells himself Doing rice on the Midica is a sort of funny old thing. You can do pasta as well. I quite like it because it just means you've got one thing. You never have to really wash it up. And I hate washing up when I'm at camp, you know, and all that sort of stuff. It's great in the winter, great on an open fire, but obviously a bit of a slower cooking prep process. So kind of shit with kids because when kids need to eat, they got to eat and young kids, I mean, and you sort of want to feed them and you know, so it's not great, which is why I carry a, a little pot in there. But um, once you've done the carbs, if you eat carbs, you can move them out. And then you've got a surface to fry on and it will stay warm on the outer edge. As long as you have the lid on. Fish as well, don't worry. So I didn't have any egg, I forgot to bring it, so I'm not sure how these are gonna go down, but we'll try it. These popcorn chicken fish bites look great though. Look at that. That's a decent meal. Glad I got some wild additions to go with it. If you do have one of these Mudokas or one of these scuttle things and you're new to it, just put some water on and leave it running while you eat your dinner. And put the lid on. And that'll clean it for you. And then you just got to tip the water away and wipe it down with some tissue. And then it's ready to put away. Really good. So I'm getting on pretty well with the draw system. Um, it was worth the effort. It's uh, it's really nice, actually. Um, I wasn't sure about the fact that I should have done two draws, but the problem being is it's so narrow and, and the, the center section, I would have lost the space to actually have this Murica in here. And um, yeah, but it's working, it's fine. I thought maybe two platforms, like one of these here too. It's just a pain in the ass. It's just too much stuff, really. I only really need one flat surface. So, uh, and the table out over there is great just for like the messy stuff, you know? So it's, uh, it's working out pretty well. Three degrees in the fridge. It's not bad, I suppose. Well, I'm hunkered down for the night now, and um, it's almost 11 o'clock, despite it looking like midday. Um, I'm in this double quilt, it goes down to about minus six degrees C. 
Um, very, very comfortable. Me and Max, my son, he's only four. We slept in this together and uh, we were very, very warm and it was about two degrees. So that was a pretty, pretty cozy night. They've got a couple of nice pillows as well. I always try and bring like proper pillows with me. It makes a big difference. But um, that's me going to do some reading and then basically hit the hay and try and get asleep. But when the wind blows, the tent isn't moving. So I think I made the right move. See you in the morning. Doesn't look too bad. Still getting some solar, but 24% batteries down. That's all right. If you make me a cup of tea in the morning, I'm anyone's. I'm just saying. It's a sign of true love, really. But um, nothing to report. Last night was a completely sound night. I had no visitors, no noises, nothing weird. It was warm, it was cosy. It was a perfect night in the tent. I'm glad I parked by the, um, the cabin. It was, what a difference. I actually slept through the night. Um, when it's windy, it's pretty hard to do that. But you can probably see that the flies are, are brutal today. There's no wind. And just a real light coverage of rain. It's actually the perfect day to be on the water in the little boat and going upstream to try and uh, find their den. If I had more time, I'd do it. And um, I'm kind of gutted now that I, I don't have more time. I'd, I'd be blowing that boat up and getting on the water. So uh, I might have to come back here. If you are interested in seeing another video of this location and perhaps getting the boat out on a better day, going up river, seeing more of this lake, checking out some of the islands, some of the cave systems and stuff. There's a few along this line here, along this ridge line. Um, let me know and I'll come back because um, I was a bit sketched about coming here after, after chatting to people, you know, because when someone's like basically told you what they've told you and they believe it, and you can see it in their eyes, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, what, who am I to say that that sort of stuff hasn't happened to someone? So. Yeah, to come here and sort of be here, it's, I mean, I, I don't feel sketched out, I don't feel like nervous, like, as I said, normally when I'm in a place where I don't feel like I belong there, you get a horrible gut feeling and leave. And even that skanky hut over there, which clearly was uh, used by um, the local club, now it's been abandoned. Yeah, that doesn't even freak me out either.
that's it from me on this video uh, just a quick one really I think I mean obviously I haven't edited it yet so I don't know how long it'll be but um, you know really nice place really nice outing I've really enjoyed myself to be honest it's been a while since I've been out solo as I said last time was February so to be out here and just kind of chill and be on your own use your stuff do some fishing have a little hike it's perfect weather wasn't great obviously to begin with but I don't really mind the rain too much um, but uh, yeah next time I think I'm gonna get on the boat do some exploring maybe actually even access the lake from a different location or maybe here because it is kind of remote and it's nice to come to and you don't really get many people down here in fact very few I don't think I've ever seen anyone down here apart from uh, some berry pickers um, from Thailand that was a few years ago but anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and um, if you like this kind of content then uh, let me know because um, I haven't done a video like this in a while I've been in the workshop quite a lot recently getting getting on with stuff in the back of that just the way it goes sometimes when I'm on projects like I've always said on this channel the things I film are just the things I'm kind of doing anyway so you know whatever happens happens and uh, yeah appreciate your support thanks to the guys on Patreon for supporting and thanks for watching and see you again soon take care